Over the last 50 years, helicopters have evolved from slow-moving multi-purpose support vehicles to fast-moving frontline attack ships. But in the high-tech wars of the future, speed alone is not enough. Information is the key. There's three elements that are critical to warfare. The ability for you to know more than the enemy the ability to maneuver quickly uh, around an enemy and gather more information about them, and the ability to provide precision firepower at the enemy. In future conflicts, after the F-22 Raptors and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighters have cleared the way, surveillance and attack helicopters will support ground troops as they move in to secure the area. We like to be down low where the action is. And we like to be down low where the threat can't see us. But at such low altitudes, helicopters are vulnerable to a wide assortment of ground-to-air weapons. All the simple systems, the guns, unguided rockets, the surface-to-air missiles, it's got to deal with all of that, and it's got to deal all of it effectively. The Pentagon has responded with a two-pronged strategy to counter this threat. Inexpensive, expendable unmanned helicopters and stealthy manned helicopters. Unmanned helicopters will be primarily used for surveillance and for gathering targeting information. Fire Scout, designed by Northrop Grumman, was specifically developed to take off and land on Navy ships. However, the key to creating a successful manned helicopter for future combat is to make it stealthy like the F-22. But the question is, can it be done? Achieving stealth in a helicopter is different from stealth in a fixed-wing aircraft. You're concerned about different signatures, radar reflectivity, infrared, noise, all things that will give away an aircraft's position. Those signatures, like heat, smoke, and sound, put helicopters and their pilots at serious risk over the battlefield. All the small shoulder-fired missiles, which are very effective against helicopters, are heat-seeking infrared systems. The challenge for engineers was to create a quiet helicopter with very few signatures and a small radar cross-section. And that's exactly what Sikorsky has done with the new RAH-66 Comanche. In the Comanche, with all the stealth capabilities, we can defeat the radar threat. We can defeat the guy with the shoulder-launched heat-seeking missile. And from the guy popping up in the tree, our agility defeats him. Our small size, our quiet acoustic signature defeats him. Often the first thing you hear from a helicopter is the sound of the wake from the main rotor hitting the wake from the tail rotor. In the Comanche, the fan tail is shrouded, so there is no interaction between the fan blade tips and the main rotor tips, and it's also canted slightly and those all contribute to reducing the acoustic signature. Engineers also experimented with the main rotor to find a quieter design. If you look at a Comanche, it's got a five-blade rotor, and what that does is it uh, cuts down the normal chop, chop, chop sound from a helicopter into a more discreet whir that kind of blends into the background. Reducing the heat signature of a helicopter is also essential to making it more survivable. When you look at a Comanche, uh, the first thing you ask yourself is, where's the exhaust? Where does all this hot air get out of the engine? The Comanche's exhaust actually escapes through the tail boom, where it is instantly dispersed by cool air from the rotor. That missile has to have something to home in on, and that's a heat signature. Comanche defeats that by the engine exhaust being mixed with ambient air and cooling it so that there's no longer a heat plume for that missile to home in on. To defeat radar, the Comanche utilized the stealth secrets first developed for the F-117 Nighthawk. There are no radar reflecting right angles on its outer fuselage, and all weapons are carried internally to help keep its stealthy shape. What's interesting about the helicopter is some of the things that achieve stealth actually make the helicopter better. Things like the retractable landing gear and the retractable weapons bays, that also makes it sleeker and faster. So once you've bought into the stealth part of it, you get other superior attributes. The main role of the Comanche is to give commanders an overview of the battlefield by providing up-to-the-minute information. 
Comanche is going to be basically their flying cavalryman. It's going to dart in and out, slash and cut, be a reconnaissance vehicle. As Comanche's two pilots gather data, their computer shares that data with other Allied forces. When the Comanche finds the enemy, he's going to kind of direct like a quarterback to apply the firepower to defeat that enemy. Engineering advances have also made the Comanche one of the easiest and most forgiving helicopters to fly. One thing the Comanche brings that other previous generation helicopters can't bring to the table is the pilot can maneuver the Comanche in virtually any axis without fear of exceeding any limits. Although it will be used primarily for reconnaissance, the Comanche will also be armed for self-defense. The Comanche is capable of carrying a wide array of weapons all the way from guided missiles using a laser guidance system, uh, heat-seeking missiles, which would be more of an air-to-air -air weapon, or unguided rockets, and also the latest Hellfire is pretty much a fire and forget. In addition, Comanche's pilots can ask Allied aircraft to fire missiles their way, and can then take over and guide those missiles to their targets. If the Comanche is hit, its computer system can often fix itself by reassigning vital functions to undamaged computer cards. This is where the computer brain of the Comanche is. In support of its reconnaissance mission, Comanche can control as many as five unmanned aircraft. When the Comanche may be employed, it may have little vehicles that it launches out, so it has its own little eyes over the hill so it can see what's going on without putting itself at risk. 